Hello, this is Todd Hubbs, Agricultural Economist at the University of Illinois. Today I'm talking about my weekly outlook from August 5th, 2019. What's going on with corn prices? You know, we've seen corn prices, particularly December future price, fall back to levels not seen since late May, mainly on what is a favorable, favorable weather outlook, some weak ethanol production, and dwindling corn exports. Um, the recent escalation of the trade war with China has drove most of the weakness over the last couple of days, but you know, there's still a lot of supply considerations out there to where we could see some somewhat tight corn stocks moving in the 1920, depending on what kind of acreage is out there and what kind of yield we might get with this late planted crop. You know, supply still is the key to any price rally in corn markets right now. We've seen corn exports tail off as we move to the end of this marketing year. As you can see in this graph, this is monthly corn exports provided by uh, the Foreign Ag Service and the Census Bureau. We had really strong exports through the early part of the marketing year and they've dwindled off significantly as we moved into May and June and this looks like it may continue. Right now export inspections sit at about 1.96 billion bushels which means we need about another 140 million bushels in the remaining four and a third weeks left in the marketing year we need to average about 32.6 million bushels and over the last month we've been averaging about 23.9 million bushels a week in export inspections it looks like we could see that estimate that USDA has put out for corn exports fall another 40 million bushels if we continue at this current pace you know there's a lot of concern about the escalation of the trade war we need to think about how much corn has China really bought. In the 18-19 marking year, they're on the books for about 11 million bushels, and they've bought none in the 19-20 marking year. So this rundown we've seen in corn prices related to the trade war is more of a risk off in commodities in general, and yet worrying about economic growth in particular globally. So really for corn, I think we're going to see this continued weakness through August and we might come up short of the USDA's current projection and overall I don't think it'll continue into the 2019-20 marketing year if the crops there now I'm of the opinion the crops gonna be greatly reduced and we could see rationing in that place but right now exports are weakening we've also seen weakening in ethanol production what you're seeing here is weekly ethanol production in thousands of barrels a day for the last three marketing years as you know, in 1819, we went through that really weak period in the early part of 2019. And as the summer driving season kicked in, we started to build production again. But recently, we've been weakening a little bit, a little bit over 1.3 million barrels per day when we were doing well above 1.05 million barrels a day. So I think what we're going to look at as we move through August with the poor margins, this probably will continue. Uh, through about July 26, my estimation, we had about 4.87 billion bushels of corn used for ethanol production. If we continue at the pace we've seen in July, we may come up 50 million bushels short of what USDA is currently projecting. So what we're looking at with weaker exports, weaker ethanol production, maybe some weakness in feed and residual and other industrial uses, you know, we could see the ending stocks for 1819 grow by 100 million bushels <clears throat> before the end of August excuse me but having said that we're still looking into potential smallest crops since 2012 and I want to talk about that a little bit as we move through the next slides the next big supply indicator we're going to see is the August 12th crop production report there's a lot of hope pinned on the acreage number out of that report what you're seeing here is the state by state acreage that came out of the June acreage report. You know, here in Illinois, I'm hard pressed to find anybody that thinks we planned the same amount of corn acres we did last year. And when you think about the pace of planting in the Eastern Corn Belt in general, some of these numbers look a bit elevated. We've started to see reports out of trade um, surveys creep out anything from 83.5 million acres to about 87.5 million acres. It's hard to say at this point. I think there's a general expectation that this 91.7 is too high. When I looked back, went back and looked at the prices that we ended on last week and I did some calculations on what the seasonal average price that the 
futures markets are currently putting in for 1920, it was a price of about four dollars and four cents. I equate that to about a 13.5 percent stocks to use, which would put us at a planted acreage of about 90.7 million acres, which is way above what most people think. And that's it with 166 bushel an acre national yield. You know, if you raise it to 168 bushel per acre yield, we're looking at about 89.6 million planted acres. Both of those seem way above what many people think the acreage is going to be. So if we get a good acreage number in the August crop production report, I think it will be supportive of corn prices. And we still got this late planted crop yield out there to think about. What you're seeing here is the U.S. drought monitor from July 30th. And... You know, as you can see, parts of Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana are getting abnormally dry. We've seen a, quite a bit of the corn crop be pretty dry over parts of Iowa and the eastern Corn Belt over the last 14 days. We need some rain. Uh, acreage project or yield projections are all over the place, but most of the ones I've seen from trade and USDA are between 166 and 168. I think some of the crop we're seeing in the eastern corn belt is very, very poor. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a national yield below if we don't get favorable weather moving forward. You know, right now the 7 to 14 day outlook is below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation. We'll see if that comes into place because we need the moisture. But when we think about the 2019 crop, lower acreage and even a 166 yield could put us in a really tight position where we could see rationing in corn prices and we could see corn prices move up quite a bit as we move into the fall. We'll see how it all breaks out. Right now, the demand side and the bearishness around demand and trade in particular is dominating the corn market and we need some positive information on supply to support the prices at levels I think a lot of people think we could see as we move into 2019-20. So the next big event for the corn markets is going to be the August crop production report on August 12th, which is next Monday. For those that are interested, Scott Irwin and myself will be doing a webinar around the August crop production report at 8 a.m. on August 13th. You can go to FarmDoc and sign up for that, and it's free to anyone that's interested, where we'll be discussing the implications of the report. I'd like to thank you for your time. You can find my weekly outlook and daily analysis of issues related to Corn Belt Farm Economics at farm.daily.illinois.edu. I look forward to seeing you around the state of Illinois.